So Brandon Miller played for Alabama on Saturday. It was his first home game since uh, police testimony uh, connected him to a murder, an alleged murder, a 100% killing uh, last month. And his pregame ritual during lineup announcements got a lot of attention. I think at this point, if you're the type of person who listens to a college basketball podcast live, you've probably seen it. Norlander, you wrote about it. I'll let you walk folks through it. Sure. Yeah, I did wind up uh, filing a column late on Saturday because, frankly, it just it seemed justified to do so. Uh, I wasn't exactly eager to have to write about this situation after having talked about it multiple times with you on the pod and then on HQ, obviously, as well. But, and I actually had noticed this previously and uh i thought that it was going to end so yeah there is it's not an uncommon thing brandon miller gets introduced and then uh someone at the end of the introduction line is just you know patting him down uh, pantomiming you know just checking you for uh for nefarious paraphernalia or checking you or a weapons check and this often not or just a general check your body as they do in mma this this is not uncommon and as i wrote in the column if it's another player on another team it's it's just cheeky and innocuous but it is so tone deaf if you are Brandon Miller. And so it rightfully got attention. It is a bad reflection on the program, on Oates, on the AD, on basically anyone with Alabama basketball. The, yeah, he, there, was, there was a lot of, yeah, he's been doing this all season. That's the point. It makes it worse. He's been doing this since the killing happened, and he's been, he did it on the road to South Carolina. Now, also, this is not something that is normally put on social media it's not on the broadcast so unless you are attending these alabama games for the most part you are not privy to it it was also this very act until sunday morning was also brandon miller's twitter header like the, the actual act of his pregame introduction there it just does not reflect well upon alabama's program and so as i wrote this this is why going back to what oats and the university have not done to this point and as I pointed out in the column on January 16th, when Oates had a six minute press conference and he was actually asked whether there are any other players involved, he artfully dodged answering the question truthfully and to the point where it was asked. He just simply said it's an ongoing investigation. The rest of the team is met and we're all available to play uh, Tuesday night in Nashville. They were going to get ready to play at Vanderbilt. So it was a tone deaf thing. Um I'm not going to make a mountain out of a molehill, but this is no small thing either. I mean, imagine if you are the friends and family of Jamia Harris and you see this and you see it continue to happen. Like it is, it is frankly, it is, ins it's insensitive, if not offensive. It just is. And I did see some folks finally who might have been just straddling the line a little bit being like, well, what, what do you want me to say now? Like uh, that this even happened and no one picked up or noticed it. Oates himself, let me read the quote and then GP, it's yours to take away. I don't really have too much to add other than this. We'll put the column in the podcast description if you want to read it. Uh, Oates said, before I get started on the game, it was brought to my attention after the game about our pregame introductions. Think that's something that's been going on all year. I don't really know. I don't watch our introductions. I'm drawing up plays during that time regardless it's not appropriate. It's been addressed. And I can assure you it will not happen again the remainder of this year. And quote, the fact that no one even realized this or got to Oates before this, it's just a it is a bad look. And it is because of this, because Alabama found a way to take a very flammable story and even through one small thing, make it worse is why we are where we are with this moving forward and you know the attention on this story will not be dying down uh, even as though there's going to be big games and the marches here this is going to be r on the, on the rail right alongside every single time alabama plays and brandon miller and Jaden bradley are in the starting lineup to that point and then we'll get back to this i remember when bruce Pearl got fired at tennessee um and i'm not suggesting nate oates is going to get fired at alabama I mean, I guess there's a scenario where some things play out a certain way and they got real issues, but I'm certainly not predicting that. My point is this. If you remember the first time Bruce Pearl had to address the barbecue and lying about it, Tennessee was right there. The athletic director, Mike Hamilton, they're right there beside him. And they're like, Bruce is our coach. He made a mistake, but Bruce is our coach. And if you talk to that staff, Tony Jones, Steve Forbes, Jason Shea, what they will tell you is that from that point forward, Every time they played on television, they didn't matter if 
this player was going for I don't remember who was on the team, but let, Tobias Harris has got 28 points. It didn't every game they were talking about the barbecue and Bruce Pearl and Aaron Craft and lied and lied and lied to the NCAA. And it became such a drum that was just getting banged on every time they played on national TV that by the end of it, they knew they couldn't survive it because it was just like people were screaming. This guy lied to the NCAA. He has to go. That is the way this Alabama story is going to be. Not in the sense that it's going to lead to people getting fired. I'm not predicting that. My point, it's never going away. Like, this is going to get banged on. Like, ESPN had the graphic on Saturday. And it's like, here's a timeline of everything. It's like January 15th. Boom. 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 It's like, here's every, it, that, it, that graphic is saved and ready to go again. Next Alabama game. So this is not going to become a smaller story. It's going to become a bigger story. And it obviously got taken to a new level of attention on Saturday because of this pregame ritual. Now, obviously, let's state the facts. Um, it is a fact that he has been doing this, if not the entire season, much of the season. He didn't just break it out on Saturday. Um, it could also be interpreted, I'm just trying to be fair here, multiple ways. Sure, like a pat down if you're going into a club or if you get pulled aside for random TSA screening, or if you're an MMA fighter walking into the octagon, right? It could be inter any of it could be tied to any of those things. Um, and I and I do sincerely believe that it was probably at its origin it, just innocent. I do believe this as well. Yeah, it just innocent. You know, young people being young. I can remember playing baseball in high school and we had these little stupid things that we would do. Right. And I'm I, I, not that this is stupid, but whatever it is, it is what it is. Harmless. Just like you said, if, if a Purdue player did it on Saturday, nobody would notice. Nobody would care. Right. But when a player who we found out earlier in the week, does it, we found out earlier in the week that he drove a gun to a scene where it was used to kill a 23-year-old woman, you don't need to be doing anything that even remotely looks like maybe just maybe one of your teammates is patting you down to see if you're carrying a gun. The optics on it are terrible. And just in the spirit of trying to be fair, I can believe that Nate Oates had not even noticed it, if only because coaches are typically not paying attention to player introductions and maybe no uh, Nate isn't the type that's noticing every single thing that's going on in his program. Maybe that's, maybe that's it's also logical and fair to say and presume that Nate Oates wouldn't be like, yeah, let's keep that going. Yeah. No, I, saw, I, I, I saw what you did there. I want, let's keep that going. That right, did right, right. not happen. Right. So I I'm, I'm somebody to your point. Somebody should have noticed this. Somebody should have noticed this and said, Hey, we, I don't know what you mean by that. I don't know when you started doing it, but like, yo, man, it just came out on Tuesday that you drove a gun to a scene where it was used to kill a mom. E even if your walk on teammate isn't technically tat patting you down, it can be interpreted that way. And by the internet, it will be interpreted that way. So let's just stay away from it. Like imagine if, uh, I don't know, nameless basketball player, because I don't even want to put any sort of face, just nameless college basketball player, and he's a prominent player, and after he, every time he makes a three-pointer, he goes and acts like he's chugging a beer and then smashes the can, right? I, I know that's stupid, but you'll get the point. I think this was what you were doing. This was your pregame introduction back, yes. back in high school I baseball? Fake, okay. I would right. fake smash a beer. So, like, a guy hits a three, and then he chugs, and then he smashes a can and throws it down, and now he's back on defense. Been doing that for years. On Tuesday, he gets charged with DUI. On Saturday, you can't do that anymore, right? Because the optics are terrible. Yep. I mean, I, he would not be playing theoretically on Saturday, but the you, point is taken. You get the point. Like, yo, man, you, your beer celebration was fine up until you got arrested for DUI on Tuesday. You can't do that anymore. It doesn't look good anymore. It's not funny anymore. Same thing with Brandon Miller. And before somebody says it, yes, I know he didn't get arrested. But he did drive a gun to a scene where it was used to kill a woman. That is forever going to be a fact. You're never going to get around that. Most people, best I can tell, don't believe he should be playing basketball right now. And what happened Saturday, I, I don't I, – because I, I think earlier I, I said made it worse. I don't know that it made it worse. It just made it 
brighter and just like, yeah. like, here's the thing. I didn't plan on tweeting a word about Brandon Miller on Saturday. And I bet a bunch of people weren't either. But boy, when that video started circulating and then when Nate Oates was asked about it or even Nate talking about it before he was asked about it, it just, boom, it, it became one of the biggest stories of Saturday's college, uh, college basketball schedule. And so where do we go from here? Um, you know, they got two more regular season games, one at home, one on the road. The road game is going to be nasty, I would assume, for Brandon Miller. Like he is – I had a I had a coach text me on Friday night. I think it was yeah Friday night. And let me ask you this, and be honest with me, because I haven't asked you this off the air. Okay. Has anybody in the sport of college basketball reached out to you and defended Alabama or Nate Oates? Has not happened. Um, I've heard from a couple of NBA scouts who feel like who have been at the past two games and they have expressed an internal conflict over what they're watching from a player by the circumstances that surround what's happening with the program right now. I haven't had anybody reach out to say, Hey GP, like maybe back, back it up a little bit. Here's the thing you don't understand. Here's the thing you might not know. Here's the thing Nate didn't know. Nobody, nobody. So I had a coach on Friday night text me and he was just like, Hey, I just, you know, read everything you wrote and listened to everything you've said. And, uh, just wanted to, you know, tell you, I appreciate it. I'm not saying this for any other reason than I'm, a, I'm about to make a point. He said, um, you know, it, it just for keep being honest about this and keeping it, keeping it real. And I said, thanks. And I said, I said, just by the way, like, what do you think about this? And this guy said he has 13 scholarship players and at least three of them were at the scene of a murder. And the only one not playing is the one that's in jail, charged with capital murder. What are we talking about? This is so out of bounds as it pertains to any sort of normal standard of how a school would handle a high-profile situation like this. I think people in Alabama are so in a bubble about this that they don't quite grasp how crazy this is to just be playing without interruption, they, you know, whatever. And the thing I would say to Alabama fans is the same thing I would say to any other fan base when you get lost in this moment because you're too close to it. Pretend this wasn't Brandon Miller. Pretend it was Wendell Green. Exact same set of circumstances, but it's Auburn's Wendell Green instead of Alabama's Brandon Miller. If you're an Alabama fan out there tweeting me or Norland or anybody else about this, trying to rationalize this crazy situation, Think about, would you send that tweet if it was Wendell Green instead of Brandon Miller? And if the answer is no, because, because, uh, uh, I mean, if the answer is yes, I mean, no, rather, you, then, then you're, you're proving my point. You only think this is misunderstood because it involves your school or alma mater or favorite team. The only people misunderstanding this are the people trying to rationalize Brandon Miller's role in this or... Alabama's decision making in this. I'm not here to argue exactly what the punishment should be. I'm simply making this point. Brandon Miller undeniably was driving around Tuscaloosa with a loaded gun in his car. He took it to a scene. It was used to kill a woman. If that doesn't violate some rule policy or standard of your program, that's insanity. It should just be a, a rule. If you are ever caught driving around with a loaded weapon after midnight and then that weapon is used to kill a woman, you can't play basketball next game and we'll figure out what happens after that. And the idea that Alabama hadn't gone there is it's crazy to everybody outside of Alabama. And in fairness, um, crazy to a lot of people inside Alabama. Joe Goodman, who's a columnist there, has been great on this subject. You know, it, 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 you know speaking from experience, it is not always easy to be the local guy coming down hard on the local university because most of your, it's easy for me and you, Pat 40, Dan Wetzel to come down hard on this situation because our audience is, yeah, it's people in Alabama, but it's people in Alaska. It's people everywhere. But when you are a columnist in Alabama, your audience is Alabama. And to tell those people, your school is way out of line here. That's not always easy, but Joe Goodman um, has done a really good job with it. And again, the only people who are trying to rationalize this or justify it are people who are uh, blinded by the type of things that too often blinds sports fans.